After a two-day journey from Congo's capital, Kinshasa, traveling by plane, motorbike, and then dugout canoe, you will finally reach Pimu, a small town deep in the heart of the equatorial forest. Families and the surrounding villagers live by hunting, fishing, and agriculture. Generations have practiced slash and burn farming. It's an ancestral method and it's really very simple. You cut down the trees and burn them. Then you plant your seed and wait for the harvest. The system eats up land and forests. Each year the trees are cut down and the soil weakened by slash and burn shifting cultivation. We need alternatives. Slash and burn farming is used by millions of people worldwide. Almost 400,000 hectares of forest go up in smoke each year. The technique is damaging for the forest, while with the gases given off by burning, aggravates climate change. Slash and burn cultivation also affects the soil. The heat given off scorches the soil. Remember that there is a rich biological diversity in the soil and this plays an important part in the growth of plants and crops. If you make a fire, all these colonies of tiny animals and bacteria are destroyed for a while, and that affects crop yields. After a few harvests, yields begin to fall, sometimes by more than 50%. The farmer then has to move on, off many kilometers from home, to cut and clear new areas of land. A year ago, a project that is unique in the equatorial forest was launched here in Pimu. The inexpensive technique uses organic carbon, known as biochar, which is made using decomposing vegetable matter and crop remains. The mixture is then put in an Adam's oven, named after its inventor, and the resulting biochar is buried in the soil. The land is fertilized and revitalized, but that isn't the only argument in its favor. With biochar, the soil stays fertile for several years, and there is less land clearance. Biochar can also be used to produce energy, so people need less firewood. The project, directed by Adapel, a Congolese NGO and funded by the Congo Basin Forest Fund, an organism hosted by the African Development Bank, should last three years. Since its launch in 2010, a hundred or so farmers have participated. I had my doubts because I'd never heard of the idea of putting organic carbon in the soil. I tried it anyway. The slash and burn system is very simple and biochar seems more complicated. In the first year you have to pull everything up by hand, but in the end you realize that you can keep working the same field year after year, while other farmers have to move on to clear new fields. It's too early for the project's teams to be able to provide clear data, showing a significant increase in yield. However, the farmers themselves say they have noticed the difference. The biochar technique also means access to carbon exchange markets. Decomposing vegetable matter ejects CO2 into the atmosphere. Biochar converts it into carbon that it traps in the soil, thereby reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The quantity of carbon that has been captured can then be sold on international markets, providing the community with extra revenue. There is a genuine market out there. A ton of CO2 is merchandise with its own price. At the moment, it is worth about 20 euros, but the rate fluctuates. It's like oil prices. Getting into the market is an expensive business. It can cost as much as 200,000 euros. There are the voluntary markets which are more accessible, but small projects are often penalized. We intend to fight for our project on the market and keep our costs down because it is important that the money benefits the poorest farmers around here. Until the project is widely adopted, hectares of forests will keep going up in smoke and food security for farmers will remain unpredictable. The stakes are high, but if the biochar project proves financially viable, it could soon be applied to the entire rainforest and even the continent. <laughs>